hello and welcome back everybody welcome to the channel we already did 10 easy problems and now it's time to spice it up with one and actually the first medium problem in this channel this is a problem given by tesla in a coding interview and it is the second problem in lead code add two numbers so let's read the problem and get your job in a tesla you are given the two non-empty linked lists representing two non-negative integers the digits are stored in reverse order, and each of the nodes contains a single digit. Add the two numbers and return the sum as a linked list. You may assume that the two numbers do not contain any leading zeros except the number zero itself. Now, this one is a bit complicated, and I think that the, the complication actually comes, the complicated part actually comes because it is a list node, so this is a linked list, and there are a couple of things that you need to do, and also we need to figure out the carry. Now, let me just draw, and I'm gonna draw the first example so you can get a brighter head. I'm gonna go with one, two, three, and sadly I cannot do one, two, three again. It's gonna be four, five, six. And right here of the square, actually I'm not gonna make a square, it's gonna be a bit more time consuming. I'm just going to write the values that each of these nodes have. So this is going to be two, four, three, and down here we're gonna have five, six, and four. And for the people who haven't understood what I meant, it is basically this example, and I'm just going to show you walk a walkthrough. All right, now we are expected to take this, but how did we actually manage to get it? Well, the first notes, right, I'm going to have again, two pointers here and these are going to be actual pointers now because it's a list node and I'm going to calculate the value of these so I'm going to sum it up now it is going to be seven so I'm just going to place seven here as a first position and I'm going to move the second the second pointer right here in this element and now when I calculate these I'm going to get 10 and I'm going to place zero and actually take this one and push it to the next iteration. So now it's a bit complicated because if I actually calculate 12 plus eight, you are going to get 20 and you're going to get 20 because here we have zero and this one. And then I press the one, I actually push the one here and that's how I get the 20. Here we need to do pretty much the same thing, but backwards I need to take zero and take the one but put it to the right side pretty much i'm doing the same thing because if you think about it if i have uh, for example seven and uh, for example what is it one and nine i am going to place the zero here and push the one to seven and i'm going to get the number 80. i'm doing the same thing here but it's just looking a bit more confusing Obviously, now when I calculate these two, they're going to be of value 7. And when I include the carry over here, it's going to be 8. And that's how we get 708 answer. So one thing of a problem that you might see here is that if I take these values over here, so both of them, right? How am I going to find a carry and how am I actually going to, where I'm going to store it and how am I going to place it over here. Now, one thing to understand and that you need to take into consideration before moving forward into the video is that if I have the number, for example, two, five, and I say modulus 10 here. So I want you to pay attention to this thing over here. It's easy, but you need to, to remember it. This is going to give me five. So basically I'm saying here, am I divided, uh, is this number div divisible by 10? And if it is, right, it's going to be zero. So for example, everything divisible by 10, right? 20, 20, 200, these are going to be divisible by 10 without any carry. But this thing over here is going to give me 2.5. So that is what I'm going to take. I'm going to take the five and I'm going to have five. So this time, when I take, for example, a sum between these two and I get 10, is this divisible by 10? Well, yeah, it actually is. And then I'm just going to take carry zero because 
That's what I'm going to get. If I get 12, I'm going to ask, is this divisible by 10? Yes, it actually is, but I'm going to have a carry of 2. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. All right, let's actually go and code it up. So you're going to see it in code. Now, let me just zoom a little bit bigger. All right, and one thing that I want is to remove this example because we don't need it. And for some reason, I cannot do that. All right, I guess we're just going to be sticking up with this. So the first thing that I want to do is to actually create the integers that we're going to be using. I already mentioned that I'm going to need a carry, so I'm going to write it down every time when we calculate and we say that we're going to have any leading zeros. This is the first thing that you want to do, create a carry. Then I'm going to say x. So for example, first, actually, I'm just going to go with x and, and y is going to be equal to zero. And, and y is going to be equal to zero as well. Something is happening to my keyboard. All right. Now I'm just going to declare the sum. I'm going to say in total sum, this is going to be equal to zero because we're starting out and pretty much we are already done. We're going to use x and y to map on the list node values. We're going to use carry to see if we have any carry and we're going to store it in total sum. So this is pretty much what we're going to do. Now, one thing that I need to create is, uh, of course, the output. This is also important and I'm going to mention it in the end of the video. Now, I'm going to say list node, output list, and this list node is going to be this node with a beginning of zero. I'm going to mention why in the end of the video, because um, when you see it, it's going to be clearer, I hope. Okay, now we're going to say list node final output, and this is going to be equal to the output list. So this here is important. Keep in mind that whenever I actually say list, and so let me just go with the drawing here. If I say list one is going to be equal, for example, to, I don't know, some sort of a linked list. And I say that list two is going to be equal to this one here. Both of them are going to be pointing at the beginning. Now, when I iterate L1, I can change the values here. I can change, for example, this value to be four. I can change this value to be three. And then this value is going to be two, for example. So now if I iterate, I'm going to get zero, four, three, and two. Well, yeah, but if I actually use L1, I'm going to get nothing because L1 is already at the end. And actually, it's not even in the two. It is in the no sector over here. And that's how we know that we iterated through the linked list. So we always need to store a second head that's going to be pointing at the beginning. And when we want to send it to the server, the server is going to take this list and it's going to start it, this list head and it's going to start iterating from here. So this one is pointing to here at the the beginning and now I'm just going to get of course the changed result because L1 changed the things before L2 actually took over. So this here is actually very important. You're going to see it and as I said I'm going to explain why I do this first line in, in the end. All right the final thing that we need to do we already know that we need to iterate through the both lists so I need a new list over here. That's why I create the final output. And I need, of course, to iterate through both of them. That's why I'm going to create first list equals to L1 and list node first. Second list is going to be equal to L2. And that's pretty much it. So now the loop is going to be simple. While first list is not equal to no, or second list is not equal to no. Now keep in mind, this is something very important. If I actually have, let's, let me start drawing again. If I actually have two, four, three, and I have only one over here, at the moment that I am at the end of the second list, the calculation doesn't stop because I'm going to get three here, but I also need to include four and three. So the whole number is going to be 343. But that's why I say or here, because I do not want to stop as soon as I get to the first end, right? I just want to continue. Now, continuing, however, however, is going to become a problem. Oops. Sorry about that. So continuing is going to become a problem. And that's why first I need to make sure that the list is not a no. Since if this one is no, I'm still going to enter the loop because it's an or here. That's why I need to check. So I'm going to say if first list is not equal to no, 
then I'm just going to say first list of value. Otherwise, I'm just going to take zero. I'm going, to taking, I'm going to be taking zero because this is not going to stop the execution. And in fact, I'm actually going to continue without actually changing the number itself because I'm going to add zeros to it. All right, the same thing is going to go for y. I'm going to say second list is not equal to no. If it's not, then I'm just going to take its value, the so second list of value. If it's equal to no, I'm just going to take zero. Pretty much that's it. Let me just remove that now. All right, and let me, can I zoom? I would like to zoom. All right, nice. All right, so the final things, actually not the final, but one of the most important one is to say sum here, so total sum. And now we need to calculate x plus y plus carry. Keep in mind that the first iteration carry is going to be zero and we're just going to have, for example, two and five, seven. So this is not gonna be breaking anything at the beginning. And of course, after that, we always want to keep a, the carry because if I have two, I do want to add it in these, all right? So now it's time to actually figure out the carry. What is going to be the carry? And did I actually, uh, sorry about that. What is actually going to be the carry? Well, the carry is going to be calculated and why do I keep doing what I'm doing? All right. So the carry is actually going to be calculated as so. I'm gonna say carry is gonna be equal to the total sum divided by 10. Now this is not gonna work in JavaScript, but it's gonna work here because we're just going to get a whole number, meaning that if I have the total sum being 23, I'm going to be having a carry of three. So this is going to give me this opportunity of calculating, for example, five plus seven, I'm gonna get 12. And of course the carry is going to be this two over here. All right, good. So now I do need to actually add the whole list thingy. Right, so two, five is gonna be equal to seven. I do want to find a way to actually add this seven to the list. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say output list. I'm working with this note over here. And I'm gonna say output list is gonna be equal, oops, dot next. Keep in mind dot next because we already have a zero here. We want the second element. is gonna be equal to a new list note of the total sum modulus 10. Now, I'm doing modulus 10 here because I do not want to get the sum 12. I do want to get 10, actually not 10. I do want to get one. And then I'm going to take the two being the carry. So the two is gonna be carrying here, but I do not want to add 12. I do want to add only one. So that is what I was talking in the beginning. All right, and uh, of course, once I actually say that this is going to be the new list node, here comes the interesting part in linked lists is the fact that uh, if I say, for example, I'm gonna say two nodes, the one is going to be one, and I am right over here. Now, if I change this to, for example, I don't know, a value of five, I need to move forward. If I don't move forward, at the other iteration, I'm still going to be pointing at the same thing and I'm gonna change this value to six. So that is why, of course, we need to go one step further and saying output list is gonna be equal to output list dot next. So that's what I want. I want to go to the next element and then I'm going to add it here in new list node because this one is going to be no. And keep in mind that we know that we're at the end of the list by having a no. So this is a, necess uh, this is a necessity. All right, since we actually did a couple of things here, and what we did is the fact that um, the first list was taken into consideration. It is not null, so we took the value. The second list is not null, so we take the value. Now I do want to move them one step ahead. Now, if it's no, however, I'm gonna get the value zero, and in order for me not having any problems, I need to check if the value is not null. And keep in mind, again, we do allow values to be no because this loop is not gonna be broken if one of the value is actually no. So we need to be sure that we're not gonna have problems. First list is not equal to no. Then I am allowed to say first list is gonna be equal to first list dot next. The same is gonna go to the second list is not equal to no. Second list is gonna be equal to second list dot next. Now this is pretty self-explanatory, I hope, but um, of course, if we are here and here, and they're not no, then I'm just going to get one step further. Both of them are not no, so I'm gonna get one step further. Both of them are still not no, so I'm gonna go one step further. Both of them will be no here because they're gonna be pointing at nothing. And 
This one is no, I'm not gonna enter the loop, I'm gonna go here, second list is still no, so I'm just going to be outside of the loop now. All right, good. So we already managed to do the while loop and this is the hard part. This was the hard part, so you did it. And the final thing that we need to take into consideration is the fact that we might have as a final list here, let's say I'm just gonna do this and we might have uh, six and four. So I'm gonna be calculating that and I'm gonna be placing zero here. But the problem is that this is not entirely right because I need to have one on here, taking into consideration the fact that I do have a carry. So at the end, I do need to actually think about that and I need to check if carry is bigger than zero, I am going to say output list.next equal to new list note of carry. The carry cannot be a two digit number, so we don't need to worry about that. And that's why I'm just going to append it. And the final thing that we need to do is to return final output, but dot next over here. And this is the thing that I need to explain as well. I make the list node output list pointing to zero. And this is going to be my head because I cannot make it point to anything else because I need to make the calculations first. And this thing here called final output, so I'm gonna write it down here, final is gonna be pointing at the head, but this is a zero. Now keep in mind that this is not officially placed zero, this is not entirely right, because I place it on my own and not uh, based on the input from the server. And that is why when I return the list, I just want to return the element starting from this zero, whatever it is, if we have any. And that's pretty much it. So let's actually run the code with examples. We are gonna place it to the server and you know the drill. We're gonna see if it's going to work. All right. It's a bit loud today. And there we go. So I do hope that you understood that. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And I hope I will see you in the next one. Bye.